Welcome to the technology section of Encinco. I'm Rebecca Maxise, and today we are so glad to talk to Ivan Lee, founder and CEO of Datasort. Super excited to have you here. How are you, Ivan? Hola, thanks for having me. So tell us about you, your experience. I know you started a video game company with some of your friends long time ago, and then you sold the company to Yahoo. So tell us your story. I moved down to California to study computer science at Stanford University. Mm -hmm. It was always a childhood dream of mine to build and design uh, my own video game. So a few friends and I got together. Uh, we started building this over the summer. This being, of course, Silicon Valley, uh, it turned into a startup that wasn't the original plan. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we ended up raising money from investors, building this into this profitable game. It was location-based Pokemon style game, something I was really excited about. Okay. Um, and like you said, we ended up selling to Yahoo um, a couple of years later. How you came up with the idea of data store? Because I know like before you have a lot of ideas, like a, a robots that clean windows for all the skyscrapers, <laughs> but, but, but how, uh, came up with uh, data store. Wow, you've really done your research. Yeah. <laughs> um, so actually, it was just a continuation of that previous story. Um, mm -hmm. When I got to Yahoo, uh, one of the first projects that I was assigned to was um, exploring machine learning technology. And mm -hmm. specifically, we were asked to replace this decade old search algorithm uh, mm -hmm. with an AI based one. And my team and I were able to deliver that in three months. And for me, that was just such an eye-opening experience. Here was this search engine I used to use as a kid. Um, and we were able to replace this, you know, algorithm so many people had worked on for so many years with AI so very quickly. And that opened my eyes as to how powerful this was. And it changed the trajectory of my career. And I moved away from working on consumer apps and video games to leading AI and machine learning efforts at a number of different companies. Uh, most recently, I was over at Apple, right? And so what I did at all of these companies, what was consistent across all of them was um, as the product manager, um, as the product lead for these, for these projects, one of my core responsibilities was always to gather all of the data that's needed to train these algorithms. And I came to realize just how important that was, right? We spent hundreds of millions of dollars gathering this labeled data at Apple. At the same time, the way that we gathered that was so incredibly primitive. Like we were still using spreadsheets at times. Mm -hmm. and it just, you know, I kept rebuilding the same tool over and over again. And finally, it reali I realized, why not build this for the broader industry? So that's why we ended up creating Datasore. We wanted to create a single software tool that made it a lot easier to uh, get, get that labeled data, save all of our clients' time and money doing so. Can you tell us about the problems it solves? The area that we focus on specifically is called natural language processing. Okay. And here now in 2023, it is very much in the spotlight with technologies like ChatGPT. So we've, we made this bet four years ago. Um, this was around 2018, 2019. A lot of people were more focused on computer vision. But for me, I had this experience with natural language processing. I felt like it was the most powerful branch of the AI technologies, the most production ready. And so we specifically focused our company on everything that was related to NLP. Mm -hmm. Now, back to your question um, about the use cases, I think we've been really pleasantly surprised by how diverse the use cases have been for natural language processing. It, you know, language is the foundation uh, through which we communicate as a society, as humankind, right? So we're seeing applications of NLP in everything from the financial sector through to healthcare, down to, we had one client who was just labeling restaurant menus, right? So really it's just anywhere that there's text, people need to label that data and turn it into an AI and use that to feed an AI model that can then consume and understand how we naturally communicate with one another. So a lot of NLP development has been done in English so far. How do you, how do we make progress in other languages as well? Yes. So great question. I think this is one that's been really important to us here at Datasort since the founding of our company. Um, first of all, our company is divided. We have uh, folks 
here in the US, and we also have an entire team of product managers, designers, and engineers in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So because of the nature of our company, we've always had a little bit more of a global focus, right? Mm -hmm. We built the platform from day one to support every language in the world. Because of the nature of research and where the research is being done right now, most of the progress in NLP has been predominantly in English, mm -hmm. number two is Mandarin, and then third, a distant third right now, is actually Spanish. Okay. Right? But that means that many languages are very much left behind. Mm -hmm. and that's something that, you know, one of our core mission goals is to democratize access to NLP. And that means that there's a lot of baseline technology that has yet to be developed in a lot of languages around the world. So we've been supporting open source communities, nonprofit communities in developing these basic language models for a lot of the languages that where that doesn't exist yet, right? We take for granted here in the US that NLP should understand terms like Chase and Wells Fargo or I don't know, Cheerios as a cereal, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't necessarily understand the same household items and brands in every country around the world. So that's something that we're hoping can be solved through our platform is you can easily label data and quickly get to that baseline um, NLP model in any language you want. What technologies does Datasor use? Well, I think what's uh, what's really been exciting here is the fact that AI is, is developing so rapidly that it mm -hmm. actually helps our customers label data faster as well. So for example, um, what I like to say is you shouldn't have to waste your time labeling manually entities like Starbucks and Saturday and London, right? NLP has made so much progress that we know what those things are already. So we can pre-label some of that for you. We can use these off-the-shelf models to automatically label those basic concepts. And then our customers are just labeling the more complex things on top of that, right? So for example, one of our customers uh, takes doctor's notes with patients and transcribes them and tries to find insights from that, right? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to waste time labeling the name of the doctor, the name of the hospital, like all of that can be pre-labeled. Now they can focus on identifying what's really critical here the names of very specific drugs and symptoms and diseases. And how does this create value for your customers? I think especially now with, you know, what's been happening in 2022, um, a lot of the focus is on how people can save time and money, right? Saving costs. Mm -hmm. So by being able to automatically pre-label a lot of the document, that can save a significant amount of time and money for, for the end client. We've been able to, to generate cost savings of you know 70%. Um, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of money is being spent on labeling. And if we can accelerate that, if we can make that a lot cheaper, I think that's really valuable to our customers. Tell me, Ivan, what are the main industries of your clients? That's the interesting thing. Um, really, it's, you know, there's a dozen industries that we're working with. There's no single majority, but I would mm -hmm. say that the top three would be the healthcare, uh, financial, and legal sectors. Uh, what these three have in common is that they all have a lot of text data, right? Think about it like a law firm and just the millions of documents that they have. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the value of having an NLP model come in and just automatically understand what those documents are saying. And now that you already talked about NLP, what are some of the developments you are most excited about these advances in NLP? Certainly we have to talk about um, what is currently, you know, very much in, in the spotlight. Uh, you know, full disclosure, one of our investors is actually the president of OpenAI, uh, mm -hmm. but I won't be sharing any inside knowledge there. It's just everybody's been talking about ChatGPT, right? Yes. Even my friends who are not technical at all, um, they're raving to me about how they're incorporating it into their daily workflows. It's giving them ideas on how to exercise, what to eat for the week, like very <laughs> basic um, thing. So uh -huh. I'm certainly excited by this technology. I'm also the first to understand the limitations and constraints for what it can and cannot do. So I think what I'm excited for is twofold. One, the fact that everyone is now familiar with this and everyone's exposed to it, I think that level of familiarity raises expectations in our products. Google announced that they're going to be rolling this type of technology out into Gmail and into their Google workspaces. And I'm so excited to use that. And I'm excited for everyone out there to, on, to expect this as the baseline threshold, right? 
Think about years ago when spell checkers were first introduced. Mm -hmm. It used to be sold as an entirely separate product. You would buy a separate floppy disk that would just have the software for spell checking, right? And it was this grandiose feature. But when it was then introduced to the browser, we now all take it for granted. It's crazy to think of some software that doesn't have spell checking automatically be part of it, right? So similarly here, as we introduce this type of chat GPT LM technology um, into our daily use cases, into the tools we are already using every day, I think it's going to raise expectations across the board. And I think that'll accelerate the rate of adoption um, and our ability to find like really compelling use cases with this new tech. So you talk about the limitations around chat uh, GPT. Can you tell us yes. more? Certainly. So I think there's a couple of really um, well-known ones, right? Mm -hmm. The first is this new term that everyone's getting familiar with, which is hallucination. Um, hallucination is this term that, you know, we use in the industry to talk about when AI just makes things up. Because this, you know, without getting too technical, uh, the way that uh, all of this is built up is it's not necessarily learning about our world. It is learning the patterns in how we speak with one another and how we write. And so it knows approximately how to respond to anything. But, you know, prior to, to GPT-4, if you would give ChatGPT a math problem, even like you know, take a four digit number multiplied by a four digit number. Any calculator from the 70s could answer this. But GPT 3.5 would spit out an incorrect answer very confidently, right? Or you could ask it questions like, how many Grammys has Beyonce won? And the correct answer might be 31, but it confidently answers 33 because it doesn't care whether the number is correct. It cares that it looks correct, that the answer is approximately some two digit, two -digit number. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the most common hallucinations. I have a lot of friends and family who are now using ChatGPT instead of Google. And I warned them not to do this because you don't want to learn the wrong thing. You don't want to get the wrong answer and you won't know. Right. So I think that's one of the limitations that everyone is working to kind of resolve before this can be used in more mission critical applications like in healthcare and finance. And what's next for Datasore? Well, I think, um, first of all, we're paying very close attention to this large language model trend. Um, we're looking to incorporate what we can do with these te new technologies. Uh, earlier this week, we just shared a new feature that the team had built very, very quickly, allowing you to use um, GPT to actually automatically label um, a lot of the, the classifications and categories in your documents, right? So things like that, there's new uh, there's new technologies, kind of uh, relevant technologies being released every week, every month, it feels like, right? Um, and then beyond that, we're looking to potentially expand beyond just labeling the data itself into uh, how we can help train the NLP model for you and really just go the rest of the way and just mm -hmm. build it the entire end-to-end -end solution. So we're starting to explore some opportunities to do that as well. Well, Ivan, thank you very much. So glad to have you here at the technology section in Encinco and so glad to meet you. Yeah, glad to be here. Thank you for having me.